Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and today we're going to be taking a look at creating procedural textures in Blender. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at creating this dirt texture you see underneath the grass. We are going to be completing this entire scene, however, it takes a little while, so I'm splitting it up into two tutorials. One tutorial we will do the base dirt texture and in the second tutorial we will do the grass and cover our mesh with particles. The coolest thing about doing textures completely procedurally is that there's no lack of resolution ever. You can zoom in as far as you want to and continue to get consistent sharp detail. So with all that being said, let's jump right in and get started. I'm going to start by opening up a new scene in Blender, adding in a plane, scaling it to 8 so that it fits the grid floor, then adding in a torus. I will tab into edit mode and hit alt S to uh, give that some more thickness. Then I'll just rotate it, scale it up, and uh, place it off to the side a little bit. I'm not necessarily going for a realistic uh, setup here. I'm just adding in a couple of objects to test our displacement and material maps on. Now I'm going into edit mode on the plane and subdividing it so its geometry is the same as the torus. Then I'm going to hit control J on the torus and the plane to add them together. Next I'll add in a subdivision surface set to 2 and a displacement modifier. I'll hit new texture on the displacement and choose marble. Here I'll choose saw instead of sin and uh, then I'm going to go into the viewport and add an empty I will drag this off to the side just out of the way and uh, then I'll select our plane, set the texture coordinates on the displacement to object and uh, select the empty. That way you can scale the empty up and rotate it to give your marble texture different mapping. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to select the base mesh again and turn the strength of the marble displacement down. Then I'm going to add another subdivision surface modifier and uh, continue tweaking the marble displacement strength. Next I'll add another displacement. I'll change this one to Veroni. And uh, then I'll turn off the other displacements and move the Veroni displacement to the top. I'll turn its size all the way up and uh, turn its strength down to a negative value. Then I'll continue to turn its size up so it just warps the mesh out of shape a bit. You can collapse that and turn your other modifiers on now and you should see your marble texture just warping over the surface of the base mesh. Next I'll add another displacement modifier on the bottom of the stack. I will select clouds for this one and uh, then I'll turn its detail to 3, set its noise type to hard. I'll turn the subdivision surface right above it on and uh, I'll set both subdivision surfaces to 1 instead of to 2. Turn the cloud displacement strength down and uh, the marble displacement strength up a bit. Basically just tweaking the displacements until I get something that looks like soil. And I turn the depth of the cloud texture up one more just to give us a little more detail. If you turn it up too high it will give you chaotic grain that will sort of mess up the displacement map. Then once I've got all the modifiers set the way I want them, I'm going to go through and hit apply on them one at a time. Now I'm going to add a decimate modifier. I'll set it to 0.2 and hit apply. And then I'm going to add another displacement modifier. I will select our marble texture and then I'll choose object coordinates and uh, select the empty again. This is just to strengthen the marble texture which kind of got lost in the noise texture which we added later. Now add another subdivision surface and another displacement. I'll apply the subdivision surface and then grab the cloud texture for the displacement and apply that as well. And then I'll add a decimate modifier and pull the decimate back um, quite a bit. So I'm going to duplicate the model and move it to another layer and then I'm going to tab into edit mode on this one and I am going to cut off any part of the mesh that I don't need. So um, just cut off the bottom half of the torus and um, any part of the plane that is out of view of the camera. This will get rid of a lot of vertices, uh, just excess vertices and make our work in the viewport a lot faster.
Then I'm going to add another decimate and just bring the resolution down a bit more. Next I'm going to add in a sun lamp and give that a strength of 6. Next I'm going to go and uh, turn transparency off for the background and we're going to work on the background world texture. I'll just go into the node editor and select the little world icon so that we get our world texture. I'll check use nodes and then I'll add in a gradient texture. Pull the gradient texture away a bit to give the node setup a little bit of space. Then I'm going to add in a texture coordinate. I'll plug the generated coordinate into the vector on the gradient texture and then I'll add in a mapping node in between these two. Set its rotation to 90 degrees on all axes and then add a color ramp in to the color on the gradient texture. And uh, if you turn the X location up, it should pull the color ramp down and uh, give you more room to work with your gradient. Next, I'll begin painting in a gradient that I think the sky should be. I know that there is a sky texture you could use in the world settings, and I tend to find that this gives you more control. Plus, once you get this material made, you can just append it in from another file and never have to recreate it again. I'm going to add in a hue saturation and value node in between the color ramp and the background shader. Just adjusting it till the shadow there looks good. Next we're going to work on the actual dirt shader. So I'm going to select our object and uh, I'm going to add a new material and I'm going to start by adding in a Mosgrave texture. This I'm going to control shift click on it and uh, set it to multi fractal. I'll turn its detail all the way up and its dimension to 0 and then its locutinary to 2 to start out with. Then I'll add in a texture coordinate and plug the object into the vector for the Mosgrave texture and uh, I'll set the scale to 1 and the locutinary up to 2.5. I'll try turning the scale down even further. Basically you want to get a pretty large scale uh, splotch over the entire mesh Next, I'm going to add in a color ramp. I'll put this into the Mosgrave, and then I'll begin painting in our basic dirt shader. Um, dirt is usually, uh, soil is usually a lot darker than you would expect, and uh, especially if it's healthy soil, it seems to be pretty red. So I'm going to paint in some dark red colors, and uh, we can tweak it later if it uh, isn't right. Then I'll plug this color ramp in directly to the diffuse shader. Next I'm going to add in a texture and noise texture. This will just be to further break up the coloration of the surface of this dirt. I'll plug the object coordinate into that noise texture as well and add another color ramp in. I'll turn up the contrast um, on the color ramp then I'll turn up the distortion on the noise texture as well as the detail and then turning the scale down. Then I'll add a mix RGB and multiply the two textures together. I don't want to multiply the noise texture at 100% over the Mosgrave, but pretty close. I'm going to also select a dark red color for the dark value on the color ramp for the noise texture as well. I'm going to turn up the brightness for the Mosgrave color ramp. Just make sure the dirt isn't so dark you can't see it. Next I'm going to hit Shift A and add in a wave texture. I will Control Shift click on this. Plug the object value on the texture coordinate into the wave texture as well. Set it to rings and to saw. I'll turn it scale down and then I'll turn the detail up and the detail scale up quite a bit and then also the distortion to something pretty high, 12 or 15. And then once I've got those set, I will turn its scale back up until it looks the way I want it to. Next, I'll grab a mix RGB, plug that in between the first mix node and the diffuse shader. I'll plug the wave texture into the bottom slot of that and I'll set it to overlay. And uh, then I'm going to add in a color ramp in between the wave texture and the mix RGB. I will select the light value to be a light pink and the dark value to be a dark red. That way we are brightening up areas and darkening areas and the material isn't just getting darker all the time. So I'm going to turn the factor up a little bit on that and uh, then we're going to add in some bump. I'm going to add in a vector bump node 
and a color mix RGB. I'll plug the mix RGB into the height of the bump. Then I'll plug the wave texture and the Mosgrave texture into the mix RGB and set the mix RGB to multiply. Then I'll plug this bump into the normal of the diffuse shader and uh, this should give us some basic bump. I'll turn the height of the bump node down just a little bit and uh, then I'm going to switch back to the UV image editor, save and render. And uh, this is what we got from that render and uh, if you ask me, this looks really bad. This could possibly work if you covered it in vegetation and uh, there was nothing of it showing through. However, it certainly does not look good to stand on its own. And uh, that's what we're going to try to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the Mosgrave Textures Locutinary down. Dirt is small, but it's not infinitely small. So you want to turn the Locutinary down on the Mosgrave until you can just barely see the grain of the noise and uh, then that should be more realistic. I'm going to control shift click on the diffuse shader to view that and uh, then we're going to continue working on the bump map. So I'm going to add a noise texture in and I'm going to control shift click on that. I will plug its vector into the object coordinate and uh, I'll turn the detail up and the scale down a little bit. Then I'll turn the distortion up just slightly and I'll add in a color ramp. Here I'll turn the contrast of the color ramp up a bit um, just so that it's more visible what's going on. Then I'll plug this color ramp directly into the displacement input on the material output. I'm going to hit Shift A and add in a converter math node in between the displacement on the material output and the color ramp. I'll set it to multiply and then turn its value to something like 3. Then I'm going to continue working on the texture for this dirt shader. I'm going to add in a geometry node and control shift click on the pointiness value all the way at the bottom. Then I'm going to add a color ramp into the pointiness value and I'm going to turn the contrast up so that we are focusing on the very darkest parts of the mesh. Next I'm going to add in a color mix RGB in between the diffuse and the last mix RGB. I'll plug the color ramp from the pointiness into this and I'll set the mix RGB to multiply. Next, I'll turn the darkest value on the color ramp into a dark red instead of a black. I'm going to duplicate the color ramp and um, duplicate the multiply mix RGB, reset it to add, and plug the second color ramp into the add mix RGB. I'll control shift click on the second mix RGB and I will redefine the values to just look at the very brightest values of our pointiness map. This pointiness value works like an ambient occlusion. It colors the cracks and crevices dark and then the very edges of the mesh white. So anyway, control shift clicking on our diffuse shader, we can see that that is a lot better and already a lot more realistic than the first. However, there is one more thing we need to do. I'm going to select the diffuse shader and hit shift S. I'll switch it out for a principal shader. Next, we need to get rid of some of the reflections, so I'm going to turn the roughness way up and the specularity way, way down. Next, we have to plug the bump into the normal. For some reason, it was switched to the subsurface scattering radius value, I assume because they're both vectors. And I'm going to continue to turn down the specularity value. I'm going to go with 0.01. So I'm going to grab the sun lamp and turn its value up a bit. I'll try 12. And um, just because the material was a little darker, I could go and adjust the material, but it's easier to adjust the sun lamp. Next, I'll turn the multiply bump down to 2 on the dirt material. Then I'm going to switch back to the UV image editor, switch to slot 2, and do another render. And here's what we got from that render. As I switch between the two, you can see that the second is much more believable as a material. Next time you have a massive mesh that you need to apply a basic dirt texture to, you can just append this in from another file and drop it on, immediately getting some pretty amazingly realistic results from a full procedural texture.
Like I said, this is part one of two tutorials that I'm going to do. Next tutorial, we're going to be creating the grass and the dirt particles that really make this scene come to life. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.